Well, we welcome and we greet each one uh, today to the weekly service of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for his blessings of this Christmas season, and we pray that in the coming new year that will bring many happy events in the life of all those who trust in Christ, who the Bible tells us is the way, the truth, and the life. So to begin our worship service today for our call to worship, let's join in singing together to God be the glory, hymn number 19 in our hymnal. Shall we stand as we sing? <laughs> i 
going to join us together as we sing hymn number 434, standing as we sing together, I know who holds tomorrow. <laughs> Apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, with us through the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according to his divine power, that he has given unto, all, unto us all things that pertain to life and, go and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby we are giving, whereby are given unto us great, exceedingly great and precious promises, <clears throat> that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, that ye may, that 
they make you that ye neither be barren or un un unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if these, for if, if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we are so grateful and thankful that you have once again blessed us to be here in your house. Thank you for the singing and the music as it has lifted our hearts to the portals of glory. Now, Father, I thank you for the blessings that is ours <coughs> through your abundant grace and through the abundant goodness that you have sent to us, showed to us <coughs> in all that you have done and are doing for your children. Now, Father, I pray, dear God, thanking you for this year that you have blessed us with. What a fabulous, wonderful, amazing, glorious year that you have blessed us here at this church to enjoy. Father, I pray now, dear God, that you would bless us as we reflect back just a little bit on your, on, on your blessings and what you have done in the midst of your people. Father, if there's any today, dear God, that don't know you as their Savior, may something be said today through the preaching of the word that would perk their heart, that, Lord, would just prick them and wrestle with them until they come to the knowledge of salvation. And then, Father, if there's any today that haven't been living where they ought to be living with you, I pray that they would be encouraged to do so by the preaching of the word through the Holy Spirit. Bless your children. May the church of the redeemed be edified and quickened, and, Father, Lord, may we be made alive and revived. But, Father, after all these things are done and through all these things that are doing, being done today, May we give glory to you because you and you alone are worthy. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a way for Apostle Peter to begin this. As he was writing to his church and writing to us, he gives us a reminder of all the wonderful blessings that we as God's children have. And as we come to the last of the year, we say goodbye to 2014. I think it would profit us to look back for just a little bit at the blessings of this year. The blessings that God has so graciously poured out upon us. I can tell you that individually, I have been blessed, and Sandy's been blessed, and you individually have been blessed this year. I wish we had time to take and go through this, and we may do a little bit of this Wednesday night and just reflect back on God's blessings on us individually, but every one of us could talk about the blessings that God has given us. But may I say to you to, today, collectively as a church, God has so greatly blessed us. We are a greatly blessed group of people as we sit here in this sanctuary this morning we can look back and see salvations of souls we can look back and see encouragement to those who have been down and we can look back and see healing for the sick we can look back and see that all the great and wonderful things that God has given to us and that we as the children of God have enjoyed I think we can say that 2014 has been a year of great provisions and great gifts and great blessings provided to us graciously by our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look into our text this morning, we find that Apostle Peter gives us words of instruction, words of encouragement to live a life in which we are continually growing spiritually and serving significantly. As I look this week, as I thought this week about what God has led us to do as a church collectively, not just in 2014, but through the last five years, and how God has blessed us to reach hundreds, not necessarily just in this church pews, but through the airways and through the broadcast and through internet and through other ways of visiting and touching hearts. I was in a business just this week, and the lady says, 
Reverend, I've been aiming to call you and tell you, but thank you for coming by my house or my apartment this, this year. Thank you for everything that y'all have left on my door this year. I can tell you this, it's been a great encouragement to you when I, to me when I needed it. What a blessing it, it has been for God to bless us to bless others. But as I look at this text that Apostle Peter writes, I want us to see, first of all, who it's written to. He, he tells us in his message, or he writes to us in his message, it is to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He writes this to those who are saved, redeemed, set free, made free by Jesus Christ. You know, when I, I thought about this this week, these are words that you don't hear used a lot today in religious circles. As I listen to travel up and down the highway and listen to, to uh, religious radio or watch some religious television, I don't hear the terminology saved used much. We have those in our, in our church this morning that knows what the definition of saved is. Those, many have been saved for years, but some only for a few weeks. It means to have been rescued <clears throat> out, of the, out of the depths of sin and the clutches of Satan and placed in the family of God. Blessed by being saved. Peter is writing this as a concerned pastor, a loving pastor, who desires that his followers know and appreciate the blessings of God. Not only do we need to know and appreciate the blessings of God, but we need to use the blessings for the glory of God. <coughs> I preached last Sunday just a short message on the giving the gift that keeps on giving. I think it, I think it behooves us, I think it is required of us as children of God that as being blessed as you and I have been blessed in the last year, that we pass those blessings along to somebody else, that we share those blessings with others, that we bless them as we have been blessed or be used of God to bless them as God is blessing us. I think as Peter wrote this, uh, as he wrote this epistle, one of his last writings, I think he spoke as one who's living on the edge of eternity, ready to leave this body in this temple in which he dwelt in, I think that's the way you and I ought to live our lives, right on the edge of eternity. Now, truly, in, if, if we really think about in, in the right proper right terms, we do live on the edge of eternity because none of us know when our time is to leave this world is. None of us know when Jesus Christ is going to come and split the eastern sky and rapture the church out. But none of us know when we're going to leave by the valley of the shadow of death either. And so I think Peter was writing here, he was encouraging us to live this life in a life of thanksgiving, but in a life of giving and serving. As we say goodbye to 2014, knowing that maybe some of us will never see the completion of 2015, knowing that sometime in the near future we may be called on by God to depart this life, but knowing that because we know God, because Jesus Christ is our Savior, because we're saved and redeemed by the one who loved us and gave himself for us on the cross of Calvary, that whether we complete another year here or not or whether we leave by death or rapture, it's okay because we've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's say goodbye this morning to 2014 by looking at the blessings the great blessings provided to us by a great God by opening the treasure chest of these scriptures and finding out what God has graciously and generously blessed us with. First of all, verse 2. Grace and peace multiplied. Grace and peace multiplied. Hasn't it been wonderful to go through a year of trial and tribulation, of heartaches, of ups and downs and ins and outs and problems and trials. You say, that just doesn't sound right. Did you say, Pastor, did you say, hadn't it been great to go through all these things? That's exactly what I said. 
You see, for a child of God, because we can go through those with multiplied grace and peace. You see, for every time when a trial came our way, there was multiplied grace. Every time that we had heartache, there was multiplied peace. You see, we don't go any through anything in our lives by ourselves. We do it by walking with the Savior and by the person of the Holy Spirit who lives and dwells within us. Amen. So we have had the blessing of 2014 of knowing the multiplied grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 and 4. According to his divine power, hath he given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Let's look at the blessings that he's blessed us with this year. First of all, I find that God has blessed us because he wanted to. And he has blessed us according to his divine power. According to his divine power. You see, all the effects of the gospel on a human heart are in the scriptures traced to the divine power of God. Everything that we have is because God gave. Everything that we have is because God is powerful to give. And God is loving and gracious to give. You see, no human means could have ever, listen to this, no human means, no human works, no human efforts could have ever made known to us the power of the gospel. Only through the divine power of God by his gospel of grace can change a character and destiny of a man. Only the divine power of God through his gospel of grace can change the character, the nature, and the, the, and the destiny of a man. You see, we were one time sinners. The word of God actually says we were one time darkness. And God in his great power and God in his great love Reached down into the world of sin which we were living in, in the world of corruption and defilement, into the filth of this world, into the filth of our life, and took us who were wretched and unclean and poor and, and naked and broke and who were headed for hell for eternity. By his love, by his grace, by his power, picked us up out of the miry clay of sin, set us on the solid rock of Christ Jesus, placed us in his hand there to remain through eternity, washed us in his blood, cleanses us by his word, and translated us into the family of the Son of God. Isn't that wonderful? You see, it's only by the divine power of God that that can happen. You and I are, in, you and I are powerless to do so. You and I have no abilities to do so. So is it any wonder that the Apostle Paul wrote to us in Romans 1.16 when he said this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul says it is the gospel of Christ that changes a man's nature, changes a man's character changes a man's life, changes a man's heart, and changes a man's eternity. The power of God, the dynamite of God, the dynamite of God, to move us from where we were in the clutches of Satan to where we are in the liberty, the glorious liberty of the Son of God. You and I have known that power this year. You and I have lived in that power this year. And what a blessing it is. But you may say, Pastor, that gospel's not so powerful to me. Why? Because you haven't believed. 
Why? Because you haven't put to believe. But all who have believed Christ has enjoyed, has, knows and enjoys the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the dynamite of God. For those of us who know his divine power, for those of us who have lived this year in his divine power, give him praise and glory in this house. As I look further into this treasure chest of blessings, I find that Peter says that God has blessed us with all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things that pertain to life and godliness. Christ has given to all believers life, abundant life, eternal life, everlasting life. All things that we ever need to enjoy this life comes when we know Christ or when Christ comes to live in our heart. Christ teaches us in John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Christ comes that we might live and know what living is all about. Isn't it wonderful to have gone through this year to live with Christ and Christ in us, the hope of glory? Peter, Paul says, it's not I that live, but Christ that lives within me. To live, live this life with, with Christ and Christ with us. Greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. What a great year it's been to live and walk and vibrantly serve a living Savior. John tells us in 1 John 5. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and the life is in his Son. And he that hath the Son have life, and he that hath not the Son have not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Isn't it wonderful to know that you'll never die? That because Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you, because he shed his blood, because he saved you, he came to seek and save that which was lost because he found you in your condition, because he redeemed you by his grace, because he paid the price on the cross of Calvary for your sin, because he met the demand of his father by death for us. We who were born twice will never die. We who were born physically, but we who were born from above, we who Christ was formed within us at the new birth will live eternally with him throughout the ceaseless ages of time. But not only has he given us life and abundant life and eternal life, but Christ has given to all believers the power to live godly lives. To live godly lives. Peter tells us in, in 1, Peter, 1 Peter 2, 24, who in his own, own self bear our sins on his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. He says he gives us all things that pertains to life and godliness. I have people come up to me every now and then and say, Pastor, it's so hard to live for God. It's, I'm having such a hard time living for God. And I look at them, and I say, quit trying. Oh, I, people come up, I try to live for God, I try to live a good life. Quit trying. Just give yourself to him. Accept what he has done for you. Quit trying and let him live in you. Amen. He says we are workers together with Christ. It is he that lives within us, it's not us. Paul says, the life that I now live is not my, live, my life. I don't live it by myself, but I live it through Christ who lives and dwells within us. Let Christ live vibrantly in you. It's harder to live in sin than it is to live in Christ. And then 2 Timothy, Paul writes to young Timothy and says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Wasn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful that if you live for Christ and as you live for Christ and as he lives in you, everybody's not going to like it and everybody's not going to like you. But God takes care of us through all those situations. So not only has he given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, 
He's given us everything that we need to live. He's given us life. He's given us all the things we need to live for Him. And He's given us the ability through Christ to live for Him. In 2014, we had a great and glorious opportunity to live a wonderful, abundant, vibrant life and enjoy the goodness of of living a godly life in Christ Jesus. Give Him praise and glory if He's living in you. And then... As we dove just a little bit deeper into the treasure chest of the scripture, we find that Peter tells us that God has blessed us with the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He tells us that God has blessed us of the knowledge of himself, of the knowledge of himself, and has called us, has placed us, has brought us to glory and virtue. Through the glory of the life and the person of Jesus Christ, God calls all people to himself. Now let me just stop right there for just a second. Through the glory of the life and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, God calls all people to himself. You see, when God says all, whosoever... He means whosoever. When he says all people, kindreds, and tongues, he means all kindred, peoples, and tongues. He'll save all who comes to him. Regardless of creed and color, regardless of background, regardless of of financial standing, regardless of educational abilities, he saves all who will come to him. He came to seek and save that which was lost. The initiative belongs to God. Salvation is of the Lord. You see, it's not that I came went searching for God, but it's that Christ came looking for me. He took the initiative. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. You see, it was God that created us. It was us that denied God. You see, it was us, it was God that loved us. It wasn't that we loved Him. We love him because he first loved us. You see, it was God that initiated death sacrifice of a perfect lamb once a year for the sins of the people. It wasn't us that initiated that. It was God that sent forth his son, born of a virgin, to live a sinless life, to die a vicarious death, and to give himself for us on the cross of Calvary. It wasn't that us that we gave ourselves to him. Salvation is of the Lord. It's not that we get salvation. It is God gives salvation. God makes known to his children all the benefits that we have through his word. And he tells us so. Now, if you're not enjoying the benefits of God, and if you're not growing in grace and growing in knowledge of who he is, Whose fault is it? If you're no closer to God on this last Sunday of 2014 than you were the first Sunday of 2014, whose fault is it? Let's look into the Word of God. You see, God tells us through His Word in 2 Peter 3.18, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, to Him be glory now and forever. He tells us that we are to grow It is our responsibility to study, to look into the Word of God, to listen to the Word of God, to allow Holy Spirit to apply the Word of God, that we might grow, that we might give Him glory. If you don't grow in Christ, how can you give glory by your life to Christ? If you're staying spiritually uneducated, It's because we're not looking into the Word of God to grow. It is a command of God that we are to grow in grace and knowledge. It has been our pleasure, it has been our joy, it has been our blessing to be able to look week after week and day after day through this past year and grow. And I trust every one of us is closer to God today and know more about God today at the last Sunday of 2014 than we did the first Sunday of 2014. 
And Paul instructs young Timothy in, t in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word study means to do your diligence, to commit your life to it. Not your spare time. Not the time that you have available after everything else is done. But do your diligence every moment of your life to be approved by God by rightly dividing the word of truth. So we are to grow, and we have been blessed in this year to grow greatly in the word of God. But then because we have been gro but we're growing in grace and knowledge, because God has brought us through the word of God to where we are today, God has called us or placed us to enjoy his glory and virtue. Glory simply means that God has done this for us. Listen to what he's done for us. Listen to the, joy, the, to the glory that he has given us. He has strengthened us by virtue and the energy of his spirit, by the Holy Spirit. He has strengthened us. We are sharing in the glory of God because we're stronger today than we were the first day of the year. We have grown to where the Holy Spirit lives within us, points out to us our faults and our failures, but also leads us to give our life as a glorified life to God. We're called into his glory that he gives to us daily, that he is our benefactor, that he gives to us graciously and abundantly his glory, and he displays his glory and his love to us. If there's ever been a group of people that has seen the glory of God, we're sitting amongst those people this morning. We've seen God in his glory shine like we've never seen him shine before here. But not only did he call us into glory, did he place us into glory, but he's placed us into virtue. Virtue means he is causing us to live a life of good quality and excellence. Listen to this. Living a life of good quality and excellence. I dare say that you can remember when your life wasn't of good quality. Amen? I dare say that every one of us can remember when our life was wretched to some point. When we weren't vibrantly living for him. When we didn't have an excellent life. When we had some more troubles and trials than we had blessings. When we, had, we endured troubles and trials without grace and peace. But he has called us to virtue to a life of good quality and excellence, to a life of vigor, a life of valor, a life of courage, a life of fortitude. Oh, this year, as we close this year out, we are much more powerful people than we were as we began. Why? Because of the blessings of God. Because of what he's done in our midst, what he's done in our, in our hearts, what he's done as us individually, but yet collectively as a body of believers. And because of he's called us into virtue, and glory, we his children have overcome evil, evil thoughts. We've resisted the allurements of the world and the temptations of society. God has blessed us to live holy and godly lives in 2014. Oh yeah, there's been things that come in your life. Guarantee it. There's been things that come in your life in 2014 that would have caused you to fall and to fail and to stumble if it wasn't for the good grace of God, if it wasn't for the power of God, if it wasn't for the peace of God, we would have failed to some evil thoughts and ideas. We would have failed to the allurements and temptations of this world. But because he lives within us and he has called us to life eternal, glorious, and abundant, because he has helped us to overcome these things, We've lived victorious. Let's give God praise that we live a life of knowledge of him and live in his glory and virtue this past year. Give God praise and glory. As we dig a little deeper, as we search through the diamonds and the pearls of the scriptures, Peter says something else to us. That God has blessed us with exceedingly great and precious promises. Oh, I love this. See, it does get better and better and gooder and gooder. He has blessed us with exceedingly great and precious promise. A promise is an assurance on the part of another 
that some good for which we are dependent upon him, he has promised. He has given us. You see, our life is not independently lived. It's lived collectively as the body of Christ. But it's lived with a dependency upon him who loved us and gave himself for us. Somebody says, I live an independent life or I'm an independent person. No, we don't. Our lives touch somebody. But we all are dependent upon God for his promises and his assurance. His promise is the thing that is in his power to do. Think about all the problems. We don't have time to go through the exceedingly great and precious promises. But, the, but his promises are, this book is full of his promises. And you see it's within his power to do. A promise is that he will, he will bestow it or not as he pleases. We cannot, in fear from any process of reasoning, that it's his purpose to bestow upon us. We don't understand the promises of God. Don't ask me to explain to you the love of God, why he loved me so. I don't know. I'm just glad he did. I'm glad he showed me his love and I accepted his love. As well as all of his other promises. That is, as a favor which we can obtain only from him, not by any independent effort of our own. The promises here that Peter is talking about refers to those that pertain to salvation and life in Christ. You see, it had to come from God through his divine power. We would still be in our sins. We'd probably be in hell today if it wasn't for his promises of life, life eternal. And yes, all these are great Exceedingly great and precious promises. You see, you can get sick, as some of you have this year. Go to the doctor. And he'll promise to do everything he can to make you well. He'll give you medicines. He'll do surgery. He'll give you a pacemaker. He'll do whatever you need. And he's going to promise to do his best. But there's only one that can promise to give you life. There's only one that's ever promised to give you life. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. How great and exceedingly great is that promise. How precious is that promise. You see these promises are to pardon sin. To pardon sin. Do you remember the day that you were in your wretchedness and your sins? And you came to Jesus. You saw him in his greatness and his glory and his awesomeness. And then you looked at yourself and you was about that big. And in all of you there was no goodness at all. Everything was filth and dirt and corruption. And you cried out to a holy savior. And he saved you. And he pardoned you from your sins. He placed them behind his back. He placed them in the depths of the sea. He placed them as far as the east is from the west. And he gave you one promise. I'll never remember him again. I'll never remember him again. What a great promise to pardon sin. What a great promise to give us strength. Isn't it wonderful that we have a God who strengthens us? You see, what we do, we can not do on our own. What we do collectively and individually, we couldn't do on our own. We rely on the power of God. He gives us comfort and support in trial. He gives us peace that pass all understanding. He's promised to us a glorious resurrection and a happy immortality. He's promised to us life eternal with Him in glory. You see, all these promises go well beyond our reasoning of human mind. And we'll never be able to understand how we could obtain it. But due to the promises of God, we have it. You see, for the promises of God, therefore, and because of the promises of God, therefore, we should be in the highest degree grateful. Our hearts should be full of gratitude and thankfulness for the promises of God. Because he saved us, he redeemed us, he keeps us, he gives us glory and virtue, he gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness, we should be of all people most grateful. And through the trials of life, we should cling to his ever, waving, ever unwaving confidence. 
because he and he alone is the anchor of our soul. He and he alone. In 2014, several of you have been through trials. Several of us have been through trials, have had problems. Some of you have laid in hospital beds, not, one, not knowing for sure, am I going home? Some of you have had the doctor to tell you, I think it's cancer. I'm not sure we can take care of it. Some of you have had the doctors to say, I don't know what it is. Some of you have had people to break your heart. Some of you have called, been given trials by your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Some of you may have gone through the trials of losing your jobs. You've been through financial problems. Some of us have went through trials in our family life. Some people have. Some of you have had all sorts of problems and heartaches. But because of our unwavering confidence in Jesus Christ, who is the anchor of our souls, we've been able to live and enjoy his great and precious promises. Give him praise and glory. Amen. Digging a little deeper, we find that Apostle Peter says that God has blessed us that we might be partakers of his divine nature. Be partakers be partners with, enjoy His divine nature. That we might be partakers of His holiness is what he's saying. The writer of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 10 says this, For, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but He for our profit that we might be partakers of His holiness. Of His holiness. Paul writes to the church of Colossians, he says this, and to whom God would make known the riches of the glory and the mysteries among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We've been made partakers of his divine holiness. He lives within us. He sheds his life to us. He shines his graces upon us. And he writes to the church of Corinthians, Paul does and says this, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. You see, this is magnificent. Through the past year, and through all the years of our saved life, but through the past year, we have enjoyed the divine presence and holiness of God in our life. Why? Because Holy Spirit lives and dwells within us. Isn't it wonderful to be able to commune with God on that nature? You see, Christianity, Christians, are the only people that can commune with their God anytime, any place that they choose. Because he lives and dwells within them. You see, when I want to talk to God, I don't have to pick up a phone. When I want to talk to my God, I don't have to go to the priest. When I want to talk to my God, I don't have to go to the Pope. I don't have to go to the rabbi. When I go to my God, I don't have to go to an altar somewhere that man has made. When I want to my God, talk to my God, I say, Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Why? He lives here. He lives here. What a, blessed, what a blessed life you and I have to be partakers of the divine nature, the divine holiness of God. And it shines out. He shows himself in us. You see, it's our desire as believers that other, others see Christ in us, not us in him, but him in us. That by our lives we glorify him. If you've enjoyed his divine presence in your life and you are enjoying his divine presence in your life, thank him by giving him praise and glory. And then listen. 
God has blessed us with the great privilege of escaping the corruption that is in this world. You see, this world is full of corruption, full of evil, full of sin. It is the design of the Christian plan of redemption, God's plan of redemption, to deliver us from such corruption, to make us holy, and that the means by which we are made holy, we are be made in the image and the likeness of Christ by his rescuing us from the dominion of sin. You see, we are in the world, but we as children of God are not of the world. Every day this past year, there has been evil and sin and corruption all around us. But God has delivered us from it. You see, I remember a time in my life that it wasn't. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. You don't have to say amen. I remember a time in my life when it wasn't sin, evil, and corruption around us, around me. It was sin, evil, and corruption in me. But because of what God has done, sin, evil, and corruption is around us and He is preventing us from partaking of it because of His divine holiness, divine nature, divine character which lives and dwells in us of the Holy Spirit. Yes, this world is an evil, sinful place. But to those of us who know Christ, we are overcomers. Listen to Paul's writing to the Romans and to us in chapter 8 and verse 37 through 39. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, through Christ. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you have been taken care of, if you have been provided for by the Holy Spirit, and you have not fallen into the corruption of this world in 2014, what a great blessing. Give Him praise and glory. And then, let me just dig a little deeper into the treasure treasure chest of the Word of God. And close with this. It is God that has provided and blessed us with exalted privileges and grace and gifts. You say, what do you mean? God has privileged us and blessed us with exalted privileges as children of God. With exalted gifts. Look in verse 5 through 7. Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. God has given us exalted graces in 2014. God has asked and and allowed and provided for us that we might be more diligent, that we might live a more virtuous life, that we might be more knowledgeable of Him, that we might be more temperate in our life, that we might be more patient in our, in our living, that we might be more godly, we might have more godliness in our daily conduct, that we might show greater brotherly kindness and charity to all around us in and outside of this church. What a great God we serve. What a great God we serve. Let us give him praise, honor, and glory for all that he's done for us in this past year. And as 2014 draws to a close, I can certainly say, and all of us can certainly say, that God has been faithful. God has been faithful. But when I make that statement, it brings up a question. How faithful have we been? How faithful are we? in the ministry of grace. How faithful have we been in the ministry that God has called us to? How faithful have we been to God? To God, the one who blessed us with all spiritual blessings. God has so greatly blessed us individually and collectively as a church. 
God has greatly blessed Woodland Heights Free Will Baptist Church in 2014. More blessings than we could ever imagine. More blessings than we could have ever dreamed of. God has led us to do things that we've never thought of doing before, reaching people that we've never been able to reach before. But then he's blessed us individually in our lives as families together in this church so greatly, so greatly. I don't know how to give an invitation this morning. I just wanted to share with you the blessings that God has given us. I'm going to ask Jack to come. As a matter of fact, let's just everybody stand this morning. I'm just going to, to do a little, something a little different. As this is the last Sunday service of the year, last Sunday morning service of the year, visitors, please come. Church members, please come. Let's just everybody, if you're thankful for what God has done in, in your life and thankful for what he's doing in our church, let's just gather around and thank God this morning. Just everybody here, visitors, please come. We, we invite you to come. Everybody who can, if you can't, just come, if you can't stand, come sit on the front pew, but just gather together, and let's just say thanks to God for victory this year and for these blessings of 2014.